Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Suit Ozabi here, back again with Demon Slayer. We are on episode 18 of season 1, and in the last episode, we had another episode where Zenitsu uh, became uh, badass Zenitsu. <laughs> so basically blacked out, uh, and then thunderclapped his way to victory, essentially, uh, against the the guy who we didn't get a name for. The guy who was basically a spider body that was turning people into spiders. Um disgusting absolutely disgusting but you know Zenitsu took care of him however he is in a bit of a bad way at the moment because he is poisoned still even though you know I thought it was to do with blood art so I thought that it would have been a case of if he killed the demon that you know he would have been fine but um it doesn't seem like that is the case and the poison is sticking around so Chuntaro is out to get help um and uh even though Tanjiro and Inosuke well at least Tanjiro anyway noticed the um heard the thunderclap in the distance which was fucking epic um the sister demon showed up um ran away and the father came out and you know basically is is in the middle of an attack right now um tanjiro attacked him with the water wheel the second form and it didn't pierce at all didn't didn't chop off his arm like it was intended so he must be in incredibly armored and i feel like he's just pure physical brute force um you know so with them two sort of, you know, dealing with the father right now, I feel as though Zenitsu is probably going to have to be helped by Giyu and Shinobu, hopefully, because I want to see Giyu show up and do something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, last episode was fucking fantastic. I love it when Zenitsu uh, goes into the, goes into that sort of way. I want to say that form, but it's not really, it's not really the case, is it? <laughs> you know. But we got some backstory on him, and it was a really, really cool episode. Um, you know, and just fleshing him out as a character even more, which you know, you know that I love. So, uh, so yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. We're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get an episode eighteen. If you do want to go watch the reaction, then uh, the link is down in the description. There's also the link to the full length there if you do want to watch the whole thing and not just the ten minute cut version. So, uh, you know, it's there if you want it. But yeah, nothing else to really talk about. So I'm gonna get an episode eighteen and see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, episode 18, and my boy Giyu finally shows up and just, I mean, I said, I said during the reaction that, like, he basically just Levi'd that demon, <laughs> and I think that's, like, the best way to describe what just happened there. He just absolutely fucking annihilated him, like, you know, like, in what would be considered, like, his second form, um, which the first form, it was hard enough to break through, like, his body in that form. But in the second one, which I assume is much more fucking tough and harder, like, clearly, Giyu just, th there was not no resistance at all, just straight through. Wow. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Just no shit, no, no shit taken. I love that. I love it. Yeah, that, that's got to be the case. It's got, it's got to be Rui then. Rui does have to be the, the 12 Kiziki after all. They made me, like, question it there, where Tanjiro was like, that guy's the 12 Kiziki. I've got, I've got to assume that Tanjiro was just being a bit, like, sort of, I don't know if gullible's the right word, but kind of just be, like, being like, oh, I can't take care of, like, you know, this guy is the toughest opponent that I've faced, so he must be the 12, he must be one of the 12 Kiziki. <clears throat> um, you know, I suppose it, it's like, in a way, it's kind of, uh, he could like attribute it to, to uh, Kyogai, who was once a twelve Kiziki, and being like, "Oh, well, this guy's just on another level, so therefore he must be twelve Kiziki if that's the case." But you know, I, I don't know if it's a a, a, a strict case of like, oh, if they're able to take more punishment, that means that they're stronger, therefore they must be twelve Kiziki. You know, I, I like because it it can I, I get, it. All depends on what you would consider strong, I suppose. Because I'm sure, like, there are ones like you know, like Rui, for example. If he is, a, if he is the twelve, like one of the twelve Kizuki, which I, I assume, like, his, like his attack, for example, is very, very strong. <laughs> I mean, his web just cut through Tanjiro's sword and absolutely diced the other guy. I mean, I don't, I don't feel sorry for that guy at all because. I mean, fuck him, right? Like he was—he was just asking for that, really. 
but Jesus, he got diced. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if, if what relates, like what, what, what strength relates to being a 12 Kizuki. Um, because before all we knew was like, oh, it all depends on how much you eat, but also how much you eat depends on how strong you get. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that like, what's the, what's the power level structure? Like, what's the hierarchy? Like, where does, where's the level that everyone's at that we've seen? Because Kyogai was once one of them, right? But in regards, like, him compared to what we're facing now, seems like next level, like really next level, so... And I assume that the father wasn't a 12 Kiziki member. I mean, I made the joke that, like, he had eight eyes before. I mean, then he had, like, what, like, 15, 16? I don't know how many fucking he had. <laughs> I'm guessing he doubled. He had 16. Fuck it, he had that, right? Which one was the one that had the number on it? Because they all had the number on the eye, right? The one, the, the 12 Kiziki. So, you know, that that's just a joke. But I, I feel as though that's a missed opportunity because that guy's just going to die. Um, and, you know, Tanjiro's not going to get the blood off that guy if that is the 12 Kiziki. So I, I don't think it is, um, you know. I feel like it would be interesting if they didn't, but I feel like they're going to manoeuvre the story in a way that Tanjiro is the one to face off against the Kiziki and the rest of them aren't. Um, you know, but I, I don't know, could be wrong. But I feel as though that's kind of like the way they would they would steer it anyway. Um, because Tanjiro was, like, he was literally the one that was given the task of getting the blood off the, you know, those closest to Muzan and tw the 12 Kiziki are, so... You know, like, I feel like it, it's, it's all down to him to, to do that kind of stuff. So I feel as though it's going to be a case of, like, every Kizuki member, he's going to get some blood off of each. And then once he gets, like, you know... I don't know. It'll be interesting if, like, you get like you get the blood off every one of the 12 Kizuki, and then that forms the, the antidote, you know? But I, I, I don't know, because it, it could be a case of getting Muzans as well, you know, and, that, and that's just the final piece of the puzzle. Because then it's just like the ultimate end, isn't it? It's like, you kill the final boss, you get the antidote, you cure Nezuko, and then all ends well. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Uh, so, whew, Giyu, uh let's just stick with him right now. Um, so yeah, he's also... A water breathing technique user uh which so i yeah again like like i've talked about before i assume that he was under urokodaki's tutelage um and he doesn't seem that old either which makes the fact that he's a hashra like even more like special i suppose i don't know how old he is um but yeah i mean the fact that he uses water breathing ten, it, that i'm guessing would define that he he, he taught under urokodaki but then I don't know how many, like, m like masters there are dotted around the place. I mean, because surely eventually you've got to use up all of the, the techniques, right? Like, is there not like duplicates of the, like multiple masters teaching water breathing? You know, I I I just feel like as though it seems as though the water breathing technique is tied to a rokodaki, so. I think it would make sense to be honest. Um. So yeah, very fucking very cool. Uh, also, I would it would be interesting because going back to last episode where Zenitsu was like, there are six forms in thunder breathing, right? So other forms obviously have a set number of um of forms. So I wonder if there's actually only nine forms of water breathing. Because you remember when I was talking about like back in episode 16 about Tanjiro's fifth form that is you know that it seems to be tethered to him more than the rest of them like that seems to be like his own thing that he is he's made um because it's it's fits with his personality the best um <clears throat> i wonder if that's something that the only thing i would say about that though is that why would it be the fifth form you know, surely if it was one that he made up, you would have the nine that was that was there, and then the, it would like the tenth form would be that one. But it doesn't seem that that way. 
Um, so it just ma it makes me wonder if that's something that Gayu has access to if he wants. But the thing is, is though it doesn't really fit with Gayu's outlook in a way, because he's always just saying, "I'm just here to take out demons, man." <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like I, I don't think he truly he doesn't have that way of, of thinking that I'm going to take them out, you know, as harmlessly as I can. I don't think he really cares about it that way. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Because, yeah, it, ma it makes sense, doesn't it? If, if, if Tanjiro's fifth form is the one that he created, then it wouldn't be the fifth form, would it? Like, you would put it as the tenth. That would make the, 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 final, the, the final form, um, the tenth form that Tanjiro is about to use would technically be the ninth form, <laughs> you know, instead of putting it in the middle. But I don't know, maybe he just likes the, the final form to be around, like, you know, the, the big number, the double digits. Like, in regards to how strong something is, I don't think that's, I don't think that, I don't think that's how it works. But, um, but yeah, I, I was about to say, like, oh god, I wasn't expecting him to use his tenth form, like, so soon. Uh, like, something that I feel like you're waiting for to come out and be used in a time like where it right it's needed nothing else is working here tenth form is where it's at it's the most powerful attack it's it's the one that's going to get through um you know and i feel like it may have been a like it may have worked had the story gone you know like where the father had shed its skin or whatever and then it's and then like if tanjiro was still there and it's like we're in, we're in a world of hurt here right then use the 10th form then i would get it but back before he even used that especially when he was trapped as well um but it, it seems as though it's the strongest one it's the one that's like i keep using the term like the truest strike because I, I to me i was like well the truest strike seems to be his fifth form because it, it's the one that doesn't cause any harm so it must be the cleanest strike but i guess the because the, the thing about you know katana's or oh, I guess in this case, Nichiren swords. The idea is that you know everything about that the the way that they swing the sword is is about having the the cleanest way through uh, that you can. It's the cleanest strike means that it, you know it, it basically it has less resistance, so it just slices through no problem. Um, so I assume that that's what the tenth form is. But then again, like I said, the, the fifth form is must be the, the cleanest, truest one because the one that is harmless. But you know, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, and yeah, like them showing up at the very beginning, there was no time wasted. <laughs> Immediately, first scene, Gayu and Shinobu were there, um, and I love the awesome music of where it's like right there in the forest now. Watch out, demons, because they're fucking the hashi right here. <laughs> it's so sick. Um, yeah, and Shinobu being like so happy go lucky and like oblivious. I, w I wonder where that comes from. Like, what what is it that makes her that way? Like, is she just come? I don't know. I don't know where that would that that would come from. Like I don't know if it's like a because I've seen like I've seen like these kind of uh, archetypes in other shows and other anime shows where it's like they have the the face of like and it's like they act like happy, but they're actually the most dangerous ones. <laughs> you know, like they're the scariest ones because uh, like they have that face on the entire time. Of um, so maybe it's a case of like. keeping people on their toes or like leading leading them to believe something different um similar to like underestimating right like like i was talking about last episode about zenitsu the fact that because he's a coward and you know he portrays himself but he doesn't really portray himself as that that's just his whole thing that the demons just completely underestimate him and don't expect him that if like once he faints that he goes into that mode where he's just going to tear the shit out of you um in a sim similar sort of fashion to that i wonder if that is what shinobu is like she has that like very feminine like <laughs> you know like very just happy-go-lucky thing going on but i wonder if deep like underneath all of that 
that it's 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 a very scary woman under that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like one that takes no shit. Um, and like maybe she's saying it all in jest, kind of thing. You know, um, to keep people like from being maybe a bit too sympathetic towards the demons, possibly. Like because the fact of like she, he, like she coming into the forest and saying like you know. I think like all of them are dead, don't you think? Like some like things like that, and she, and you know, just going to Zenitsu and just like, you know what I mean? Oh, are you all right? <laughs> like clearly not. Um, so I, I don't think it's a case of like she's just compl like she's just stupid in that regard, and she just I feel like I don't know. Maybe there's something more there, but you know, lying underneath. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, so what next? Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll go with the... Let's go with the Inosuke flashback, yeah? So Inosuke, um, you know, I, for a moment there, it, it was... Go in the reaction, it was going to basically tell me that I completely underestimated Inosuke at that point. Um, but then pulled it back, <laughs> you know? like Because, you know, they, they had his theme going, right? And he's like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to fucking back down. And then he just gets... Like, he just gets trampled. Um... And even to the point where, like, that that was the closest call. They've had some close calls, like, in this one, where it's like, well, Zenitsu's have, like, you know, life's hanging by a thread, having to keep the poison in, and then, you know, Inosuke about to have his head crushed like a fucking melon. Um, uh, yeah, Inosuke having that flashback, so it makes sense, right? He doesn't have any parents, he never grew up with any parents. And the reason why, it, what it looks like is that the... The family was under an attack by a demon and as a sort of a last resort by the mother she i guess like threw the baby in a river i suppose that that's what it is um because the rest of them were getting absolutely you know demolished um I was trying to think of like a, a fucking, like the, the most appropriate word and the fact that as soon as I said demolished I was like oh no that sounds horrible like you know they, they were getting run over by you know demons so I think that yeah that, that's what it was like a last resort and it makes yeah it makes sense now it's like um, it, it's like, like the story of uh, like <laughs> like Hercules or something you know um, about like you know like uh, there's another one as well that's like I think Egyptian or something there's like some like stories of where like the baby has been like left like in a basket or something like that and it's just like the name is written like somewhere and that's what he says like the name is written on my line cloth like that's a, you know um but yeah interesting that that he actually had that memory back from when he was that young because it's very rare like you'd have memories from that you know but um like especially like that young um you know, and the way that I, I was wondering if I recognized the mother. She she seemed very like close to the spider mother, like you know, and it's hard to like distinguish, especially when like that was like you know a couple episodes ago now. So basically, I watched it last week. And now, like, trying to distinguish the Japanese voice actresses and if they were the same or not, because they sound similar. But then it's just, like, that kind of thing of, you know, it's like, it would be similar to a Japanese person watching some Western show where they're talking, you know, obviously talking in English. And it's, like, two, um, two female, like, mothers, like, you know, just talking in that same intonation, uh, like, the same kind of way. And, you know, watching them a week in between each other and trying to figure out if they were the same person or not because they seem very similar but i'll be I'll, i mean i would be surprised if if, if like that spy if the, the spider mother was you know inosuke's mother I, I don't know it's just that when i when i saw her in the flash in the flashback it was almost like i'd seen her before but i don't i don't know if i did i may honestly i may just be like i, I, I have like two images in my head the mother the spider mother and then it's just like it's like one overlaps on the other it's weird i could just be like completely like my brain just must be like could be making that up you know 
like putting like one and one together and just being like yeah that kind of sounds about right <laughs> you know but th i mean that's what i do you know i talk myself into just talking about stuff that it has no relation whatsoever but i just tell myself it's like yeah that could be a theory fuck it let's put it out there that's what i do um you know but uh, i don't know if it's going to be a case of like that ever crops up again like if there's going to be more to that because if inosuke remembers that bit then he might remember stuff that happened beforehand and we may get more a, a, a bigger look at what his family like who his family are and maybe it has something relevant to what's going on now i don't know i mean the fact that like i'm even thinking about the spider mother being the same person it, it's almost like but on one hand it's like well what was the point because inosuke never even got to see that the spider mother right so there's no like there's nothing to continue on with that with like Inosuke being like you just killed my mother kind of thing um, th there's nothing to really you know and I, I just don't know the, the interesting thing I think is going to be what more we get after we take care of these the rest of these spider demons because every time they take care of one we get a bit of backstory right we didn't get one with the father which is interesting um, so I almost feel like, you know, it's, it's something that only actually occurs when Tanjiro is there, you know, because um, he's the one that brings that out in people. He brings the best out in people. So, I feel like what we will get is some kind of flashback relating to the other ones, maybe the, the sister, and that'll we'll get something in regards to like the mother and father there because right now we only have one piece of the puzzle which is that the spider um mother mother's flashback was like there was somebody that used to look at me that way and it was a guy that like had almost like a bull cut but also like a, like a, a big ponytail thing coming down as well so i don't know um but we've got the piece of the, like one piece of the puzzle we need more <laughs> right we need them all so that we can put it all together and then figure something out um but yeah so yeah the sister what we got there was yeah so that was confirmed i, I thought it was weird like the, the the sister wasn't as on board with everything that was going on that the other ones were um and for a second i thought that Rui might have been like the same you know like i guess it still could be a case of like yeah they were a family before they were demonized and then Rui was just that standout one that ended up becoming a, a, a kiziki member and he's not one that was just like a, a kiziki member that just came in and was like we're going to be a family now and forced everyone like under his boot kind of thing <laughs> um so he still could be because it, it affected him right the whole thing of tanjiro saying that your your bond is forged so it still could be there we'll just have to wait and see um but he was like peeved by by hearing that so interesting um but yeah the sister was being tormented so it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the dynamic of what's going on here if we get a situation where the sister fights back against Rui, i don't know um but remember a demon can't kill another demon so it makes for like an, an interesting dynamic and you also get it with nezuko when she's there which is interesting to note is tanjiro still carrying nezuko i can't remember if he if he still had the box on his back i've completely like completely disregarded like i, I completely forgot about her. <laughs> you know what i mean shit's been going on i've been like yeah fucking up nezuko nezuko um uh, but uh, uh, basically back to the point i was like it's kind of like similar with nezuko with tanjiro is that it's the perfect like sort of support that you could have on your side is another demon because the demon can basically you know keep the other demon occupied and they're not going to get you know they may get like hurt by it but they're not going to die by another demon so um just like the, the perfect support um so yeah we'll, we'll see what what happens with that if uh, the sister decides to assist with um like tanjiro and whatnot the fact that the web just cut through the sword and now is heading straight towards tanjiro 
yeah, he's just going to die, isn't he? And that's it. That's the end of the show. <laughs> that's exactly what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what Tanjiro does from now. Like, I don't know how he gets out of that. I'd have to assume... It's... I feel like this it took place... The way that they, like, transitioned the cuts and everything like that, that... Not the cuts of the web or anything, like the actual trans just transitional cut. That Giyu and Inosuke weren't close enough to a system there. So it has to be. <sighs> Zenitsu is going to be being taken care of by Shinobu. And however that works, I don't know. I don't know what Shinobu has in order to assist and heal him. Um. So I don't know. I mean, we've got uh, what's his name still out there, though. I I, don't, I really don't think he can do much right now. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, did a little. Uh, mm -mm. Where is it? It was in episode fifteen. Or ah, there, Murata, right? So we've got Murata there. That doesn't. I, I don't. There's nothing you can do. You would have to have something that's going to stop. Right. There's only one or two things that can happen here. Something has to get in the way, and stop that web, from cutting into Tanjiro. Right. Or Tanjiro has to dodge it. How does he do that? I don't know. Because <laughs> he's in midair. Right. So. I don't know. It's just. It's just a fucking. It's just another. Another cliffhanger that I have to deal with until next week. That's basically what it is, you know. Just sucks, man. Just sucks. But, uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. I suppose, yeah, I, I, I didn't really go much more into um, Inosuke's sort of flashback. Because, I, I mean, well, I went into the actual flashback bit. But I thought um, I was... I just didn't write it down, so I almost forgot about it. Um, I like the fact that he thought about Tanjiro in Zenitsu um, in that moment. And then even to like <laughs> a further extent, the old granny. Like, they left an impression on them, on, on him, you know what I mean? And that's the, the thing that I was talking about last episode, about like the character development with Zenitsu, where Zenitsu, it's, it's more sort of obvious and like up front whereas Inosuke's is more like subdued and very like you know his is because of the way that he is as a character it's harder to break through that initial um you know like that that emotional sort of barrier that he's got up there <laughs> right so the the things that when he's when the development of his character is like going through and whatnot it's very like subdued and, and it's more of a slow burn rather than you know with Zenitsu it's more clearer um you know so yeah i like that that was that was really cool um that just <laughs> even the old granny just cropping up you know i thought it was i remember like you know some episodes but i think it was episode 15 where i started talking about obviously the the moments where inosuke is like having those balls come out of him and he's like well <laughs> you know like he can't believe what he's hearing but it's almost like they are leaving an impression on him so I wonder if that's what the balls meant in a way. Like at, the, at that present point when he was like at that current point when he was getting told that kind of stuff, he didn't understand what it meant until now. You know, like now it's hit him kind of thing. Now he understands. So yeah, that's really cool. I like how that came around like sort of full circle in a way. So that's that's really nice. But um, but yeah, that's all I got. So great couple of episodes. I'm glad that Giyu's finally turned up. Um, you know, I don't know how much more he's going to be involved in the fight other than just what he just did. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was happy with how just quickly and nonchalantly he, de he dealt with that guy. That was insane. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's all I've got for this episode. So, fantastic episodes. 
so thank you everyone for watching. In the description below, I have links to certain things. One of them is the Discord, so you can get yourself over there if you wish. And I also have a Patreon page where you can support me as well. So if you do want to support me, that'd be very much appreciated. There is a bunch of different tiers and rewards there, like early access for five dollars a month, it means that you can get access to episode nineteen and twenty right now. You don't even have to wait until next week; you can get them right now. Um, and uh, yeah, you can go enjoy that. There's also full length tier there uh, where you can pay to have you know to watch the full thing, my full reaction to the whole episode and not just the 10 minute version. And then there is other tiers where you can pay to have the sh uh, a show reacted to as well. So if you want me to react to a show, grab a look at those tiers and see what they offer. But that's all I've got. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.